Practical Help for Your Digital Life is sponsored by Positech.net, a member-supported service bringing geek-free answers to your burning questions about consumer technology. Hi, I'm Chris Gardner, and this is Practical Help for Your Digital Life, sponsored by Positech.net. Let me take a few minutes of your time to be your technology coach. I'd like to help you navigate the digital age and have a healthy digital life. That means helping you get more out of the consumer technology that you already have. You know, getting it to work harder for you, not the other way around. My show isn't about the latest gadgets and newest stuff, but about stuff you own and use today. In this series, I'll focus on some of the most common stuff you do with your computer, smartphone, tablet, or other gadget, as well as things you do online. I'll cover all sorts of consumer technology that you can buy and use, and hopefully give you some advice and practical help that will make your digital life easier and healthier. At Positech.net, you can watch all my digital minutes and read step-by-step -step instructions with pictures, diagrams, and animations. Today's show is about your iPhone and how you can make your smartphone work smarter and do more work for you. I've put together some quick and easy tips to make using your iPhone easier. So sit back and enjoy the show. Feel free to skip ahead or back and get just the help that you need. My first digital minute is about a really common problem for which a lot of people need a better answer. You know, these smartphones are so smart, but why is it so darn much work to make a phone call? You have to press, swipe, tap in your lock code, then tap a few more times just to get to the dialing keypad. That's way more work than you had to do with those older dumb phones. So here's how to get your smartphone to do more of that work for you. Push, slide, tap, 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 Finally, I can dial the number. It sure is annoying that your smartphone takes so much work to make a simple phone call. How about we get your smartphone to work a little smarter for you? Let's get Siri to do some of the work for us. Don't bother to turn on the phone. Just hold the button to activate Siri. Call 1-855-767-4835. Calling one eight five five seven six seven four eight three five. So by pressing just one button, I can tell Siri to call any number I want and she'll do it. This is pretty reliable. I've done it in noisy places and she still understands me. Next, let's try calling someone who's in our address book. Hold the button to activate Siri. Call Pam Willens Mobile. Calling Pam Willens, mobile. So again, by pressing just one button, I can tell Siri to call any person in my address book. This works fastest if you tell Siri which number you want to call, like home, mobile, or work. You know, the voice command feature has been on iPhones for quite a while, but not until the iPhone 4S did you get Siri. And if you have an iPhone 5, you have an even smarter Siri. But even the old voice command feature works reasonably well as long as you follow a few simple rules, and these apply to the latest Siri as well. First, speak clearly and without hesitation. That means you need to think about what you're going to say before you say it to Siri. Second, Siri doesn't understand all the possible ways you could phrase a command, so you need to say it in the way that she needs to hear it. For example, when making phone calls, I found that Siri better understands the word mobile instead of cell or cell phone. Maybe she's British. So if I'm calling my fellow coach, I'll say to Siri, call Pam Willens mobile. Siri starts that call just fine anytime, even when there's background noise. Third, Siri can have trouble with people's names, especially if they're not phonetically spelled. So instead of the person's name, you can use their relationship to you, if you set that up in advance. More on that in a minute. And fourth, working with Siri can be frustrating if you don't use the commands that work best with her. I've got examples of my favorites coming up. Now Siri can do lots more than just start phone calls for you. You might have seen one of the commercials Apple's put out showing someone famous using Siri. While she can do a lot of things, I think it's more practical to focus on just the few things that you do often. 
Here's my short list of common stuff I get Siri to do for me. Let's do this for real right now and you can see exactly how Siri helps me. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty forgetful, so I get Siri to remind me about stuff. Set a reminder for 6 p.m. today to stop and pick up dinner on the way home from work. Here's your reminder for today at 6 p.m. Shall I create it? Yes. Okay, I'll remind you. Notice I didn't even have to turn on the iPhone and tap in my lock code. Siri can make phone calls, set reminders, and a few other things without that. I also like to use Siri to send text messages. Here's what I do. Send a text message to my son saying, Hey bud, comma, I'm going to be late picking you up from baseball practice, period. Please wait inside the dugout and I'll text you when I hit the parking lot, comma, in about numeral five minutes, period. Here's your message to CJ Gardner. Ready to send it? Cancel. Okay, I won't send it. To send it, I'd have just said yes. Now if I made a mistake and I want to redo the message, instead I'd say the command change. If I just said no, that's more ambiguous and she'd take longer to ask me what I wanted to do. Like I said, clear commands work well. And if you want punctuation, you have to include that. Did you notice that on the texting command, I didn't use my son's name? Earlier I said you can use relationships instead of names. That makes things easier for Siri and for you. It takes a little advanced work on your part to teach Siri who your peeps are. Here's what you do. You probably know who you deal with all the time, so tell Siri who they are to you. A while ago, I told Siri, my son is CJ Gardner. And so from then on, she knows this, and I can use the word son in place of his name. Practical, huh? This works with lots of relationships besides just family. It's a long list that includes mother-in-law, boss, manager, wife, brother, cousin, and even friend. So for example, I told Siri, my friend is Adam Sterner. And now I can tell Siri, send a text message to my friend Adam, and she gets it right every time. Doing this in advance makes it faster, easier, and more natural for you to use Siri. Other examples of stuff that I do every day are commands like make an appointment with Pam Willens for 2 p.m. tomorrow or change my appointment with Pam tomorrow to 4 p.m. Now Siri does that pretty reliably. I can also get directions easily by commanding directions to Pam Willens home. For directions, she can use your contacts list and also look up addresses to businesses. For instance, if I tell Siri, look up the address for legal seafood in Tyson's Corner, she'll display that info and also their phone number. That's great for calling in a carryout order. And I can get definitions of words by saying define and the word, like define obfuscate. All these commands can be made by just pressing the home button. I don't even have to type in my lock code. Now if I want to open an app, I command open and the app. For example, open rocket taxi. For this, she'll prompt me for the lock code if my phone's not turned on. You have a lock code, don't you? There are a ton of examples of other commands you can give Siri on the Apple website, as well as a nice list we've seen from our friends at the unofficial Apple weblog and one from our friends at iDuono. Just pick a half dozen or so things that you do all the time and start using Siri instead of tapping and swiping on your iPhone. Lastly, besides using Siri, the latest iPhones also have a little microphone icon on the keyboard so that you can dictate instead of typing on that teensy little keyboard. I like to use this for email messages because it's a lot faster than using the keyboard. Again, think about what you're going to say and then say it. You can start and stop the dictation by tapping the button. So you can dictate, say for example, a sentence at a time. Although dictation doesn't stop listening to you like Siri does. I think she just tries too hard. So let's try this for real while I recap this for you. So there are two different ways to talk to your iPhone. The first way is using Siri by pressing and holding down the home button. The second way is to dictate anytime you see a keyboard. Just press the little microphone icon. Now go ahead and pause the show and try this if you like. And I stop the recording. And there's the text on there. 
It works pretty good, don't you think? Even without punctuation. Okay, if you tried it and it didn't work well, you may just want to spend a few minutes practicing. That's what I did and it makes all the difference. And remember to avoid hesitating when commanding Siri, she might stop listening. If you hesitate when dictating, that's no problem, but Siri's different. She's trying to anticipate what you want. In case you missed hearing this in my examples, Siri makes three beeps to cue you. Her first sound means, I'm listening, and it sounds like this. Her second sound means, I heard you, and it sounds like this. Her third sound means, I heard nothing, and sounds like this. So between the time you hear the first sound and either of the other two, she's listening. But once you hear one of the others, don't bother talking because she's not listening. Now when you're dictating or commanding Siri, the latest iPhone has some awesome noise cancellation. I've used Siri in the car, when parked of course, with the radio on and she still understands me perfectly. I've used her outside on a windy day and even in a noisy mall. She rarely misses, but you'll waste your breath to speak to her if she's not listening. Kind of like when my son has his earbuds in, he can't hear me at all. Anyway, Siri can be a real time saver for stuff you do every day on your iPhone. Just get to know her a little bit. Well, that's my show. I post all my digital minutes individually at Positech.net, plus anyone can watch my Practical Help shows on PracticalHelp.tv or catch my podcasts on iTunes. Digital minutes and shows are available to help you anytime, day or night. Could you please click the like button and maybe even comment or ask me a question? I really like questions. Watch for my next show, which will be all over the subject of computer security, the Practical Help way. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or Vimeo, or become a member at Positech.net.